This is our Sunday School lesson for October the 14th, 2018. It's Lesson 7 from Unit 2, titled, God Destroys and Recreates. And in our Faith Pathway study manual, it's titled, Constantly Working. And then in our Standard Lesson Commentary, it's titled, The Call of Abram. Our devotional reading is Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verses 4 through 10. Our background scripture are the chapters 9 through 12 in the book of Genesis. And our printed passage is Genesis 10, verse 2. 11, verse 10, 27, 31, and 32, and chapters 12, 1 through 4. The key verse is Genesis, the 12th chapter, verses 2 and 3. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you and I will bless your name I will make your name great and you will be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you I will curse and all peoples of the earth will be blessed through you our lessons aims are to discuss the genealogy that is listed in the book of Genesis. Uh, the 10th chapter of Genesis is referred to as the uh, genealogy of the nations of the earth. Um, also, we want to uh, explain the purpose and the terms of Abraham's covenant with God and describe his or her role in the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham, uh, who, uh, until the time that Abram crossed over into the land of Canaan, uh, name was just Abram. So uh, when we look into the disbursement of mankind, uh, this, of course, again, we know from our previous lesson, is from the sons of Noah. And this, of course, is after the flood. So we are looking at the repeopling of the earth through the three sons of Noah, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And from these three sons, their lineage is the repeopling of the earth, covering the African people, the Asian, and the Europeans. Um, and so uh, what we focus in here is from the lineage of Sham. And here it brings us into God's plan to bless this people, but most importantly, and the ultimate aim, is to bring the Son, to bring Christ, through this lineage, through this seed, as we will see later in the scripture where he explains to Abram that he is going to make him the father of many nations. And from that lineage, the Son of God, the Christ, the Savior of the world, would be born out of that family tree. Now, um, there is a uh, sometimes misleading, uh, uh, somewhat assumption uh, that when someone is blessed, when someone is in the favor of God, a lot of times it is assumed that 
they are protected, which they are. Uh, they are favored, which they are. That they are somehow uh, a elect group. Uh, but the misleading assumptions and interpretations sometimes are is that uh, no harm will come to them. That because they are blessed, because they are in God's favor, because they are a part of God's plan, that no misfortunes shall befall them. That uh, the uh, covering of God makes it so that they don't have any unfortunate incidents. Um, there is, uh, they don't face the same challenges uh, that other people do. So, uh, but what we see here is uh, from our background scripture that Abram recognized what is written in Hebrews 11 and 6, where it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That one must first believe that God is. And for those who diligently seek after the presence of God, that they will be rewarded. And so when they list those that are examples of faith, Abram, Abraham's name is recorded in the examples of of those who exemplified, who demonstrated faith. And when we look at our lesson and recognize the area, now the Ur of Chaldeas is uh, located in an area referred to in biblical times as Mesopotamia. Uh, and it is somewhat uh, bordered by Turkey and Armenia, Iran and Iraq and Syria. Uh, this is the area that somewhat uh, in borders the area where Abram was. But then God instructs him that I want you to leave your father, Terah, I want you to leave your father, Terah's house, and I want you to come into a land that is not your own. Now, uh, we have to uh, think about why or what is the significance of just being relocated. Uh, since today, uh, we have a uh, somewhat, um, I guess we would call a normal practice where there is a lot of transit, a lot of movement, a lot of people relocating. Um, and some of it is because of war-torn countries, uh, because of civil war, uh, international conflict, uh, but then we have people uh, in local areas uh, that are constantly moving from one area to another area. Uh, here, these were not some of the standard uh, everyday occurrences. But here, Abram is being instructed by God to relocate to leave his father's domain and to come into a land that I will show you. So first, he's being told to leave an area of comfort. Uh, we could uh, conject here that uh, sometimes when we are in a familiar surrounding, an area that we are uh we know, we are familiar with, we're comfortable, that um, 
we uh, have a certain mode of ease and stability because our surroundings, we are well known of those. But uh, sometimes moving from a place of comfort and a place of familiarity, uh, it can create a certain uh, consciousness of uneasiness because now I'm into an area that I'm not familiar with. I I don't know the uh, I don't know the terrain. I don't know the landscape. I don't know the people. I don't know the culture. I don't know the social settings. So uh, to take a step like this. Uh, causes us to rely on a power, on a source that is greater than ourselves. And Abram actually demonstrated uh, this act of faith because he followed God's instructions. And when we look at this area, sometimes uh, people are willing to leave an area that uh, maybe is not very conducive. Uh, an area that maybe there is uh, the uh, geographic uh, terrain uh, is, is not very conducive to human uh, or habitable means. So one might be willing to just leave because uh, the weather conditions here, the terrain, the, the climate, uh, it's not very uh, uh, comforting. Uh, it's, it's not a very habitable place. But where Abram was leaving, it, it's not the case here because uh, this was in a well-developed area. Uh, many of the archaeological studies have shown that this was in an area uh, somewhat like a metropolitan area. It was a trade center. There was a lot of commerce. Uh, it had a political system, a strong economy. So it wasn't that where Abram was, it's not even the intention that God was... Uh, feeling sorry for Abram and saying, I must get him out of that terrible condition uh, and that area that I've placed him in. Uh, no, it wasn't that at all. It was, is that where Abram was, was a welcomed area. Many people traveled to that area to exchange in all types of business and political and trade and commerce and things of that sort. So uh, when we look at this, we have to think about how ready are we as individuals to leave a place of notoriety and go to a place that has not even been defined or identified or determined for us as of yet. Just on the promise only of the creator that I'm going to bring you into a land that is not your own, but I am going to establish you and make you the father of many nations. Uh, another point to cite about being removed from uh, a place that uh, we are familiar with or uh, that is common to us is, is that uh, we develop uh, a certain practice, a uh, certain uh, cultural uh, behavior. Um, our uh, society, uh, the customs and traditions that uh, we have been brought up in become a part of our makeup and who we are. Uh, and sometimes 
uh, those customs and traditions that we uh, are bound by or that we have a certain beholding to. Uh, sometimes those things God wants to remove from us, not that uh, they are detrimental to us or not that they are uh, bad, uh, but just that sometimes in order for me to introduce you to some new customs, to some new ways, to some new practices, I have to remove you from that area where you have become conditioned by the cultural settings, the customs and traditions of your father and that household and those people so that I can bring you into a new consciousness. Sometimes I need to change your surroundings so that I can, uh, so that you'll be more receptive to the new that I am bringing you into. One other factor that we should entertain just briefly, uh, prior to this establishment of Abram and his becoming Abraham, uh, prior to this, um, we also need to address uh, the other part in the printed passage, uh, but this uh, is in the 11th chapter of Genesis, and it kind of gives us a background setting of why God is using Abram to make of him a blessed people. Uh, in the 11th chapter of Genesis, it, it talks to us about the peopling at that time and for a geographic location, it is in the area of Babylon or uh, where we um, uh, find the people that were all a, shall we say, they were a monolithic people. Uh, they were all of one language. And because of their setting and because there were so many and in this area, this geographical location, they chose to come together and build a city with a tower in it so that they could reach into the heavens. And the biblical account is, is that it was looked upon as it was vain that the people were trying to uh, build something uh, to show forth uh, their togetherness or to show forth uh, what they were able to do. Uh, and it was seen as though they were trying to identify themselves as being equal unto God, and that also they were building a structure, a temple, if uh, for the lack of a better word, so that they could uh, show forth praises and worship unto gods that they had established. And so God sent down from heaven to confuse their language and this place became known as Babel. And in Hebrew, the word Babel means to confuse. So um, when we look at why then is this precedent set for Abram, it is on the hills of the Tower of Babel being confused and the people scattered all over the earth. And so when we recognize that the text says, and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and I'll make thy name great and you will be a blessing. And not only that, but I will bless you and your name and that everyone who comes into contact with you, 
because of the blessing I have bestowed upon you, they also will be blessed. But those that will uh, malign themselves and those that will set forth to do you harm, those that will uh, come against you, those I will curse because they attempt to curse you. And so uh, now, again, when, when we think about this, uh, again, this line, this lineage leading up to this, um, so that we also understand that by God saying that I will bless thee, I will bless those that bless you, but I will also curse those that curse you. Um, we recall in uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, the 11th chapter, and I believe it starts around about the 16th through the 33rd verse, but this is Paul, and he was actually uh, compelled uh, to explain or expound upon uh, who he was, but also what he had suffered. I bring this point up because uh, sometimes um, it is confused or sometimes it is thought that if someone is blessed of God, then there should be no harm that comes upon them. Uh, but here, Paul, in 2 Corinthians in the 11th chapter, he's not actually boasting of himself, but he's trying to explain that if you say that you are of the seed of Abraham, so am I. If you say that you are a Hebrew, so am I. But as you read prior to these verses, you see that Paul explains that he was imprisoned, that he was beaten, that uh, there, there were those that wanted to kill him, that he was stoned. Uh, so uh, it's, it explains then that just because I am of a certain lineage of a certain people, uh, just because I have a certain heritage uh, does not mean that I would not also suffer the stripes and the other challenges that are brought upon people in this life. Now, when we look at the ultimate goal, which was that Christ will come through this line, uh, if we look in the 8th chapter of John, and I believe that this is around uh, about the 48th verse uh, leading towards the end of that chapter, uh, we find that the scribes and the Pharisees hey, are uh, approaching uh, Christ and they are challenging him because uh, this was right after the woman uh, was found in the act of adultery and Christ said while they were all ready to stone her to death and Christ said he who was without sin cast the first stone uh, which dispelled the whole crowd but um, when we look into this and read further we find out that Christ is telling them actually the nature of who he is and he was telling them that he was of his father. He was telling them that he was the light of the world. And when they began to question him to try and entangle him, they said that they were of Abraham's seed. And you recall that Christ said, before Abraham was, I am. And what I gather from that is, is that God's plan, it was before time, but it was in time, and it was on time. And that, as we customarily say in our faith, that he knows the end before the beginning. So we certainly hope that something was said to shine a light on to our scripture of study for this Sunday. 
And as always, our prayer is, is that the continued blessings of God would be afforded unto you. God bless you.